My name is James Pereira. Uh, I practice in planning, environmental, compulsory purchase, local government law. Um, I was called to the bar in 1996 and I took silk in 2014. Uh, I love the bar, I love its uh, independence, I love being self-employed, I love the challenge, I love the competition uh, we have with each other and I also find it a very creative, imaginative process, the problem-solving nature of it. In terms of what happened to me from a well-being perspective, um, I found it very hard to say no to work. I've, I felt under pressure, almost an obligation to, to take on more and more that was asked of me. Uh, I was um, obsessed, if you like, with perfectionism. Um, those two things, the amount of work and my attitude to work, meant that I worked extremely long hours, sometimes 60, 70 hours a week. I have to say, I have to admit, I became very stressed. Uh, I also became physically very, very tired. I would live with exhaustion uh, as a kind of constant companion. My work never suffered, and I think this is a, something that a lot of people at the bar, because they're very capable, uh, would say that although they're tired and they would say overworked, they still manage to perform very well. And because you tend to, we tend to focus on performance as a uh, touchstone of how well we're doing, we don't therefore necessarily think there's very much wrong with the downsides that come with that, the personal downsides. That's what happened to me, and I got to a position where I literally had to stop and take stock of what I was doing and how I was doing it. One of the first things I did, a very simple thing, was to control my diary and my work patterns. So I defended very rigorously my working hours. I made sure that I only worked within what I would call regular or normal working hours. I took weekends off the table as a generality. Sometimes one has to work at weekends, but I was working weekends as a norm. So I took that off the table as being kind of workspace. I also made sure that my diary put all of my commitments, work commitments, that made them express on the face of the diary. So all my preparation time, things that had been hidden before were then put in the diary so everyone knew what my work commitments were and I knew what my work commitments were. The second thing was learning to say no. We're not very good at the bar at saying no uh, and there is, a, there is an idea that as a barrister in order to succeed, you have to do more and more work, you have to be flexible, you have to be willing. There is a, a, a myth or an implicit um, belief, if you like, that there's something soft or undesirable or negative about your looking after your personal well-being. But actually, your well-being and your performance go hand in hand, in my view. So if you can take care of yourself, get enough sleep, uh, be, be happy, have social contacts, all of those things, that make you a stronger person inside, they will equally make you a stronger practitioner because you'll be far better equipped to deal with the stresses and strains of the job, to be present with your clients, to be fresh enough to plan your cross-examination and to think on your feet. You'll be far better equipped to deal with that if your life generally is supportive of your well-being. I can say, uh, categorically that everyone around me, including people who I thought would not be supportive, were extremely supportive because they understood ultimately that it was in my best interest, my practice's best interest, my client's best interest, my chamber's best interest that I worked in a sustainable way.